propagation explanation coming your way. So wait, so am I pulling this off? Mm-hmm. I would take these two together. Oh, okay. And it really is coming apart much yeah. easier than I thought. Yeah, yeah they really do. That and one so did make me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Just a second ago. We're here at Freckle Farm with Lisa Grames to talk about the proper way to propagate indoor plants. All right, Lisa, let's get started. So what's this first plant that we have? So this one that we're working with, this is a Sansevieria. Um, common name that you hear a lot is snake plant or mother-in-law's tongue. This guy is a variety called Moonshine and he's about busting the seam. So we're yeah. wanting to kind of break him apart and make some new plant babies. This is propagation by division. So division means that we're gonna actually divide it in half. Mm -hmm. um, perennials are often divided this way. Okay. But I'm gonna walk you through this and kind of okay. let you do it. All right. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a section and uh -huh. you're gonna gently tease apart and pull down. These guys are gonna have pretty <sighs> thick roots. <laughs> I promise so, you I can't getting... do too much damage. Okay. I would leave it in kind of half sections or even in thirds. You want kind of big guys. If you break them oh, too far, I see. then it they don't seem to transplant as so well. I so I want to take this little guy with it. They're exactly. On the same. Do you see how it's naturally oh, yeah. kind of falling apart for you? Oh, the they, babies are growing up. They <laughs> are growing up. They want to leave mama. Okay, so. very cool. Oh, this is easier than I thought. Yep, you so. just gently pull down. You are going to kind of open up some of that tissue. Now you've got a whole plant oh, baby. Oh, wow. So really not as hard as you think. No, not at all. If we're working with a plant that's this small, you want to keep them kind of root bound till they get started. So this guy, we may double up with another one okay. just so that we're not getting them too loose. Okay. So I would divide Maybe. that in half. Sansevieria are very forgiving and they will kind of do this for you. It sounds scary when they <laughs> snap. They're like the big root nodules and then uh -huh. these are all of the aerial oh, roots. Okay. So you can take those apart. So we're gonna put two or three in this guy and then you can do your pot as well. Okay. I see. All right. And it really is coming apart much it, easier than I thought. Yeah, they really do. That and one so, did make me nervous <laughs> just a second ago. But when that it was pops, it is a little scary. Yeah. So if you mm -hmm. put those in, you want them about the same level on this pot. Oh, okay. And then you can tuck in soil around them. Okay. And kind of get them all nestled in and you've got two plant babies out of one. Aww. Like magic. Now it's all clean and we're here to talk about stem cuttings. So yep. we have a pothos. This pothos is called a neon. Mm -hmm. It has that great papa sh chartreuse color. Um, we also have a pothos here hanging up, which is a jade. So that one's got kind of a darker green. These ones are incredibly easy to propagate and this is one that people love to share, mm -hmm. um, especially if you get into some fun colors of pothos. So right. a real traditional way of t doing propagation for pothos is by water. This is by far the easiest for most. Um, a lot of people will do it this way. I have actually found that propagating in water, when I take this and transplant it into soil, I get some transplant shock and it takes longer for it to come back. So I actually like to root my cuttings directly in soil. So I'll show you how that works, but okay. this is a perfectly acceptable method. <laughs> I just, it's a little bit more scientific right. using soil. Right. So and I can understand, like you said, it's easier because we always have water in a glass around, but we might not have potting soil. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. And it's a great one that's like, if you accidentally break off a stem and you don't have something right away, stick it in some water right. and that saves you time. Mm -hmm. um, but it's nice when you can do it in soil because then you can do multiple mm -hmm. and get it nice and full. Okay, so, very cool. We're gonna walk you through how to do this. Are you excited? Okay, I hope I don't kill it. All right. <laughs> so we're gonna take a pretty long stem cutting. So you can see this stem is getting quite long. So if you wanna cut that up near the top, near the top so yep. does it matter like do I need to count like how many leaves or is it just kind of looking at the plant um I usually this is when I go through and groom my pothos this is when I usually propagate it so okay. I'm more trying to get it a nice shape mm -hmm. so by removing the stems up to this line that's going to help the plant bush and get fuller okay. right. so I usually give it a pretty hard haircut and then I cut those down I so, gotcha so like right there right there's perfect okay absolutely okay. Nice. Okay. Awesome. So for each stem cutting, you want to have two nodes and then only one or two leaves. If it has more leaves than that, it's going to stress it out. So we're going to actually take this section mm -hmm. and make it into multiple. Okay. So I'm going to have you cut again. You always want to cut right above the leaf. You don't want to leave a stub. You want that to be as close to the leaf as you possibly can. So right okay. about there. 
Okay, and then do the same thing with this one. So we're gonna go up two notes and then we're gonna cut right above that. Okay, so right there? Exactly. Perfect. So pothos are really unique in that they have these preformed root nodules. So you can feel and see these cool little oh, bumps yeah. on the back. Uh -huh. It's root primordia. It's basically cells that haven't divided and done because they haven't been programmed to. Okay. But if you put this in soil, it's gonna initiate root formation, which cool. is really cool and really yeah. fun. So we're gonna cut off this leaf and this leaf because we won't need them for this. We want okay. those nodes, but we don't want that extra growth oh, the plant has okay. to support. <laughs> you want to just make a little hole so you can insert the stem. So usually you just wanna kind of push that soil aside. Okay. Perfect, yeah, something like that is fantastic. So now you can add your other stem cuttings and do two or three. Okay. I like to do two or three in a pot to fill the pot. Mm -hmm. And then if I have one fail, then the others will survive and I still got a plant going. Good, very good. Okay, so two nodes, one leaf. Exactly, yep, so, so right about there. Right there? Yep, Okay. perfect. I'm like suddenly having a very difficult time counting to two. <laughs> and then do I want to Exactly. Cut these off yep, as you'll well. take off those okay. lower leaves. You're basically trying to give the plant a chance to make roots and not have to support an entire plant. I see, I see. The more leaves it has, the more it has to photosynthesize, and you don't want to have to add that stress right. to it. You made that look so easy to just make a hole in this. <laughs> <laughs> so perfect. Okay. So now you just want to kind of secure up the soil around the pot. Mm -hmm. And a really cool trick is to actually cover these guys. So mm -hmm. when you have high humidity and mm -hmm. low light, that encourages root formation. Okay. Um, so you can actually cover them with a bit of plastic. And this is okay. something everyone has access to. It's a mm -hmm. produce bag. Um, mm -hmm reuse the plastic and put it over a plant. So right. basically you're gonna tuck this guy in, mm -hmm. get him covered up, and then I can tie off the base. And I've essentially created a little greenhouse mm -hmm. and it holds in the moisture, it holds in the humidity, right. and then you can come back and test when these are ready. So we're gonna leave it like that. And then once a week you wanna get in, give it a water, um, you'll pull gently on the stems, and as soon as there's roots, you can't pull it up. Oh, so it's a okay. really fast, easy method, and anyone can do this at home. So this next plant we're gonna be working with, this one is our spider plant. Mm -hmm. Spider plants are really, really fun because they send off these cool offshoots. Yeah. Um, every one of these was a blossom at one point, and then it makes these little plantlets. Um, they're mm -hmm. called plantlets. Some people call them spiderettes, um, just because it's <laughs> off of the spider uh -huh. plant. Just anywhere? Or? <laughs> yeah, I actually like to remove the stem, because okay. once I start taking the plantlets off, I've just got a weird cut. So right. if you actually come right in there, you can take the stem, and we're gonna kinda do a very similar concept to the pothos in that we're gonna break these down by the stem. Mm -hmm. These guys, you're gonna cut right above and right below. Oh, okay. We don't need the nodes because these guys root incredibly easy. Okay. So you don't have to use any rooting powder or anything special with them. It's just about creating that right environment. Cool. So if you wanna cut that one, and then we have a few others we can take okay. off of here. Sometimes when you get to an older one, you can see it's starting to put on some nodes and roots, and those ones I usually like to go after too. So like this one, you see how it's starting to kind of enlarge and it's getting ready. Mm -hmm. Those ones are gonna be great ones to take. So I would cut just above and just below and leave that almost in a little cluster. Oh, okay. Yep, exactly, and cut that in half and then we'll use both pieces of that. Mm -hmm. So you're actually gonna lay these right on the top of your soil. This soil's pre-moistened. Okay. I always water in my soil before I put it in a pot. So now you can tuck these in and you want good contact with the root, okay. um, with the soil, and then that's gonna help it build roots. So tuck that in, push it in a little bit, exactly, just okay. like that. Okay. Yep. And then you can do that with your other three and we'll kind of fill the pot. Uh -huh. So we're gonna do the exact same thing like we did with the pothos. We're gonna cover mm -hmm. this with a bag to okay. increase that humidity. So, and then you wanna leave it in kind of a bright but indirect spot in your home. That's gonna, the covering and stuff is gonna help build that humidity. It's gonna put on roots. This guy has been in for about a week. And so we're gonna wow. open him up and I'll show you how far the roots have come along. Okay. So this was uh, taken about I'd say about eight, nine days ago. Okay. He is fully rooted in. If you pull gently on these tops, you can see uh -huh. I'm lifting the pot. 
Wow. And it's it's rooted in that well already. Wow. So they these ones are incredibly easy, really fast, mm -hmm. which is fun. But if I pop this guy open, you can see how far those roots have come wow. already in just that short time. Wow. So now you've got a That's whole another plant baby started. Plants are pretty incredible and they're wow. all a little bit different, but you can learn stories about each one. Okay. Absolutely. Very cool. Thank you so much, Lisa, Absolutely. for walking me through that process. It was very nice to have someone to tell me, yes, this is right, no, this is wrong. It's Absolutely. Very helpful. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about responsible propagation. I've seen in a lot of Facebook plant hobbyist groups, mm -hmm. people talk about their plants being snipped from their front yard. Yeah, I mean, you'll find that people will often see succulents growing in California and want to take some of that home with them, or they'll they'll take cuttings from people's yards. And, you know, we highly encourage that propagate and share, but always ask permission. You want to make sure that you wouldn't want someone to come and steal a plant from your yard. So it's just always nice. And most plant enthusiasts, they love to talk and share about their plants. So they're more than happy. You have to be very careful with what you take too, because often you can run into, it may look okay, but it may have a disease or it may have a pest. So if you're taking cuttings and you don't know the care of it, you may be bringing something home that you don't want. No, so you don't want that. Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely, yep. And then I'm also curious about plant patents. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about how to keep an eye out for that. Yeah, so if a plant has a patent, it's, it's illegal to propagate it. And so if they do, it's gonna be on the tag. It's gonna say on the back, Pat, this plant is patented, do not propagate without, without authorization. You wanna be very careful of that because you can get into some legal ramifications of propagating. Often I see that on newer cultivars, newer introductions, or even on a lot of succulents and cactuses. Um, they're harder to breed, they're harder to propagate. And so these growers put a lot of time and effort into plant breeding and we wanna respect that as well. Thank you so much for teaching me about indoor plant propagation Absolutely. today. If you want more information information about Freckle Farm. They have a really great Instagram page and Facebook page. Their website is also really good and they have a YouTube channel. So please check out their information in the video description below. And if you want more propagation explanation, please check out our blog posts on pbsutah.org slash modern gardener. We have a great blog post that I work super hard on all about plant propagation. And if you wanna see more videos like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And lastly, Modern Gardener is a project of PBS Utah, which is supported by viewers like you. So if you love this video, or if you love any of our videos, please consider supporting PBS Utah. There's a link to donate in our description below. For Modern Gardener, I'm Lizzie Brousseau.